Okay, well let's look at everything that you get in the box for the Woodpecker's exact width dado jig. You have the jig body itself with these large aluminum anodized end assemblies that are really sturdy. And a good bit of assorted hardware that comes with it. Let's look at it a little closer. Okay, so we have the four clamping plates that will mount to the body of the jig and just give you a nice spot for a small F clamp to hold the whole jig down to your work table as well as to your workpiece. We have these stop plates that function uh, when you're using the jig for stop dados. This will actually stop your router base in a predetermined location and they also have the function of a, a pointer that lines up with the scale that's built into the jig in certain situations. We have an edge marker guide here We've got a pair of zero clearance MDF blocks that are pre-milled and pre-drilled just as they need to be. There's also a precision half inch guide bushing with a related component that is a half inch spacer. And we'll use this for initial jig setup when we're trimming these PVC edge guides with the router bit that we select. One of the first jobs to assembling the jig is mounting these stainless steel clamping plates. But before we do that, you'll want to go around and make sure that the phenolic edge of the jig is aligned with the anodized red aluminum portion of the jig on all four corners. So just loosen the knob and flush that up, and then you'll be ready to install the clamping plates. Three of the clamping plates are the same. One of them, though, has a hole that's a little bit larger. And that's the one we're going to start with. You want to start on the movable end of the jig. You know you're on the movable end of the jig because it's the side with two red knobs as opposed to just one. And so we'll get that installed here. Start with a Allen head button screw and get that started. On the other side, the reason the hole is a little bit larger is for this small spacer. Drop the spacer in place makes it function kind of like a shoulder bolt. And then the edge indicator, a small nylon washer, and another Allen button screw of the same size. So we'll get that installed with the included wrench. And now this acts as a pointer to indicate the edge of your workpiece. Okay, so onto the adjacent side of the jig. Again, just flush up these surfaces here before you proceed with installing the clamping plates. No other nylon washers or anything here. These just simply install with the two Allen button screws. And it's the same idea with the other two clamping plates at the fixed end of the jig. They just install with the two Allen screws, no other hardware. You can tell this is the fixed end of the jig because it's permanently attached with these cap screws and it only has one knob on this end. Now flip your jig over and we'll set about installing these PVC edge guides and those install right into the recess on the bottom side of the jig. Now Woodpeckers currently makes this jig in two sizes, a 24 and a half inch jig and a 32 and a half inch jig. And unless you're doing some real specialty applications with oversized case pieces, I suggest you get the 24 and a half version. That'll do most any cabinet application that you could think of. And that's what we've selected, the 24 and a half inch version. So make a mark at 24 and a half inch on your PVC edge guides and just score that on both sides and that will just allow you to snap it to the right position. It's like cutting drywall. Okay, once you have your PVC edge guides cut to fit, 
Just re remove the backing and drop those in place right over your recess. And again, there's a spot cut specifically for it. Just make sure to line it up against the inner edge here, the little rabbit in the phenolic base and press it in place and that's not going anywhere. Okay, and we'll get this other one situated the same way. Just hold it tight against the rabbit in the phenolic and away you go. Perfect. So you can see the PVC edge guides that we installed now project out past the black phenolic base of the jig. And this will be trimmed once we do our initial setup pass with the router. I want to show you these little zero clearance guide blocks. They provide an entry point for your router bit as well as back up the cut to avoid any splintering or chip out. They are somewhat sacrificial in nature, so they're available from woodpeckers or they'd be pretty easy to make from MDF in your own shop. So to install those, just make sure that the opening is facing the left as you're positioned facing the fixed end of the dado jig. So just install the blocks in these little pockets, slide it all the way in, and use these small Phillips screws to complete the installation. The holes have been pre-drilled by the manufacturer, so there's not much to it. Just make sure when you flip the jig back over that the recess will be on the left side of the jig. Here's the fixed end of the jig. You want the recess on the left side. You can imagine which way you would route. You'd start against this left phenolic edge and route down the dado, finish your cut, and come back on the right side. So it would make sense to have the entry hole right on the left side. So we also need to install these dado slide plates and they also function as a pointer in conjunction with this scale. So take the double post piece of hardware that looks like that and install it from the underside of the jig up through this slot in the anodized aluminum portion. Put your slide plate right over the posts and then we'll use one of the nylon washers and this step shoulder bolt that's threaded will help to control that sliding plate. So that's how it functions as a router stop. The scale lives down at the fixed end of the jig and is secured by this knob here. There's also a neat feature. There's a step away in the scale that accounts for the width of the jig and that'll actually help us when it comes time to set the router bit depth. Well, let's talk about bit selection for your exact width dado jig. I thought I'd break into my Lee case. I've got a bunch of spiral bits that came with my FMT jig. We need a 3 8 inch bit and ideally you'd have a spiral carbide bit. Well I do have a 3 8 inch spiral carbide but unfortunately it's an upcut spiral and for cutting dados especially in plywood with delicate veneer a spiral down cut would really be the thing to have. So I think I'll put this project on hold. We'll wait a couple days until the bit comes in. Okay, so our new router bit came in. It's a 3 8 inch down cut spiral bit. So we're ready to trim the edge guides on the exact width jig. So that's what our bit looks like. It's a 3 8 inch cutting diameter. And that's what's recommended for the woodpecker's exact width jig. 3 8 on the cutting, but make sure you get a half inch diameter shank. I have noticed there's commonly advertised a 3 8 inch spiral bit but it also has a 3 8 inch shank. Unless you've special ordered a 3 8 inch router collet, you probably don't have one on hand, so make sure that you order a bit with a half inch shank. You can always tell it's a down cut spiral bit because when you rotate it clockwise, it looks like the flutes of the bit are turning down towards the tip. The traditional way to center the sub base on your router is with a centering cone. Or check on my channel for a non-traditional way to center the sub base you don't have to use a centering cone at all. This is the white side RD4900 down cut spiral bit and that would be one that's approved for use with the woodpecker's jig. You don't have to use a spiral bit, you could certainly use a straight bit but you'll get a lot cleaner results with the spiral down cut. 
Grab the onboard scale to help you set the router bit height. There's a little step back on the scale from the jig and that just accounts for the thickness of the jig body itself. That way there's no math involved when you go to set up your bit depth. Okay, so grab a scrap of sheet goods, 24 and a half inches wide. The critical dimension is that you do want it to be a full 24 and a half inch wide for the 24 and a half inch jig. Basically fill the capacity of your routing jig and that way you'll trim all the way down the PVC edge guides. With all three red knobs loosened up, make sure that the sides of the jig are pinched down into your scrap work piece. And then with the spacer, the half inch spacer installed at one end of the jig, pinch that together and tighten up these two knobs. On the other end of the jig, you'll use the guide bushing as the spacer. Pinch those together against your guide bushing and tighten the single knob. You can confirm that the spacing is correct by checking with the half inch spacer at either end of the jig, and that looks good. And then use two or three small F clamps to clamp the jig and the workpiece down to your bench. And then take a second to move these router stops out to the extent of their travel. With these types of jigs, I almost always use router dust collection. For this initial trimming pass, I'll go ahead and leave the dust collection accessories off so you can kind of see what's going on. To use the jig, just take a piece of the actual material you intend to use and put that in the opening in the jig body. And then just gently close the phenolic portion of the jig. And just with light pressure, go ahead and clamp the knobs. And the same on the other side. As you pull that out, you should feel just a little bit of resistance and you know the fit will be right. Add any additional clamps that your setup will allow and we'll make that cut. So unlike our initial pass where we trim the white PVC edge guides, since this is a real cut in a workpiece, you'll actually get some side to side play of the half inch guide bushing within the jig. So that's normal, don't let that throw you. And we'll go ahead and make that cut. Well, it looks like we've got a nice clean bottom cut, so we'll go ahead and pull the jig off of there and see how we did on our fit. Okay, so if we drop the piece in place, we can see how we did. Let's flush up the ends a little bit. Nice tight fit, just like it came off the table saw. Okay, let's see how we did on that one. Yeah, looks like another great fit. Well, that's the rundown on how to set up and use your exact width dado jig from Woodpeckers. It's a great jig to have in the shop. I hope you get a chance to try one for yourself. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.